Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Some of you have been asking us for this content for a long time, and I am more than happy to present you now the digital version of some of the best practices that we usually share with the companies that we support. Hir hiring was in the top three of the biggest hurdles for companies before the crisis. And well, to be honest, it still is. I would say even more than before. We are indeed seeing a decline in interview requests, and I will talk about that later. But if we add to that decline, the fact that the world of work has entered um, a new focus, which is on remote work, and new hires being carried out entirely digital, it is even more important now to be efficient. But as we often say, the problem is the solution. Therefore, in this context, there are still opportunities to be seized. For example, digital interviews make it possible to speed up the hiring process. Today, we will try to show you how. Before that, though, I would like to present uh, to you myself and uh, my story and background for those that don't really know me. Um, I am a graduate of Japanese studies with several years of experience in tech recruitment. Being interested in foreign languages, I became also curious about programming languages. So I undertook a traineeship in software engineering company after moving to Germany. I am now working as a talent advocate at Talent.io and I'm sourcing, interviewing and coaching candidates for the Talent.io clients. I'm also currently studying for a degree in HR and I act as an L&D ambassador for the Berlin office at Talent.io. So it's nice to meet you all. So what can you expect from this uh, webinar? We cannot deal at the moment with all aspects of recruiting because in that case we could make it a five-day workshop. But what we aim to achieve with this webinar is to help you do two things. One, give you the opportunity to monitor yourself on the market, what your current data is telling you and how your recruitment process compares to the market average. This notion of data driven is what allows you to make your decisions on the analysis of the data available and above all to evaluate your process on tangible elements. And number two, we will also give you the best practices, the ones that are proven to work these small actions can bring about big change and big results. Regarding the first step, which was data monitoring, how do you get your market data? Talent.io is one of the most important players in the tech recruiting market. More than 3,000 recruitments are made each year through Talent.io in Europe, and we are natively a data-driven company, which means that we are able to evaluate the median behavior of a panel of several thousand companies and extract the best use cases. And well, the worst too. So our agenda is to be data-driven and give you all our four essential points on recruiting in tech. Who do you want in your team? How to keep a healthy pipeline of candidates? What is a proper hiring process? And how to make candidates choose you? First things first, who do you want to be in your team? Who do you, yes, who do you want in your team? In other words, what main elements do you take into account when defining the profile of the ideal candidate? For example, culture, tasks definition, objectives or outcomes of the role, the candidate's previous experience or education. Badly defining these um, elements could have a negative impact on your entire hiring process. To further expand on interview techniques, for example, the so-called sponge approach is one that is often found among very busy managers who feel that the more steps there are in an interview process, the more reliable the hiring decision will be. There is also another process called the prosecutor's approach, and it is based on the idea that tough questions will reveal a candidate's true potential. It is, of course, not the case at all. Knowledge and the ability to do the job are two very different things. Then, last but not least, the so-called pretender's approach, which is to spend all of your energy selling the candidate the opportunity you offer. This method, of course, does not involve any listening. Fortunately, there are tools that can be used to manage risk better, and one of them is described in the book called Who by Geoff Smart and Randy Street. The book covers a lot of topics, but there is a specific tool that I would like to present today because it is very effective, but also simple, and therefore easily used. This tool is called the scorecard. At Talent.io, we have internally recruited over 150 people using this framework, and we think it is really effective. Now, what is a scorecard? 
This is a document that describes exactly what you want a person to accomplish in a defined position. It's not just a job description, but rather a set of measurable outcomes and skills that define what a job well done would look like. Simply put, the scorecard is a list of skills, traits, and qualifications that a person will need to have to be successful in the upcoming role at your company. It is therefore indeed an internal tool and not external, like the job description, which will help to interview candidates. So your scorecard is the first step for a successful hire. Several elements that it contains are the role and the mission of the job. For example, the role is software engineer in this case, um, but the mission, for example, at Talent.io, it is to develop the platform by taking responsibility for tech projects. The expected results um, are expectations regarding the key performance indicators of the job or KPIs. And of course, we must not forget about the skills required for that particular role. Everything that was mentioned in the scorecard is important as it takes all of these parameters into account. Our recommendation is that the first thing to do when hiring, before you even write a job description, is to create your own personal internal scorecard. Now, how to keep a healthy pipeline of candidates. The second point uh, that we would like to talk about that was in the agenda was the pipeline of candidates, AKA the terror of some recruiters and a vast subject. But we will focus on four essential keys to sustaining your pipeline. These four keys are, Contact many candidates, use as many sources as possible, get personal, customize your message, and play the long game. So it is very important, of course, to contact lots of candidates. On average, companies must contact at least 20 profiles to make one higher using traditional channels. On Talent.io, since our candidates are pre-qualified by our teams of talent advocates, we achieve on average 4.5 candidates for one hire. As mentioned, the key to success lies in your ability to source a lot of candidates, between five and 20, depending on your strategy. The question now is where to find them. The important thing is to use as many sources as possible, obviously, to, to find the right talent. So what we recommend is to multiply the sources of acquisition, which we have been refining at Talent for five years already. The first channel I would like to talk about are the job boards. It's very classic, you have a job offer, you post it. To save time, you can use solutions which will post your offer on dozens of job boards in one click. And to give you an idea of the budget, it is necessary to count on a cost of between 100 euro up to 1000 euros to meet a candidate. That's the price of the advertisement plus cost of the sourcing of the candidates. And of course it varies if it is a niche profile, senior or not. If you screen 10 candidates per position, you can imagine the cost could skyrocket quickly. Then there is, of course, the hunt. <laughs> Being targeted and personalized is the most precise method, but also the most time consuming. A figure that I would like to highlight is the objective of having at least 25% response rate to your messages, your emails. If you are below this, you need to reconsider your targeting, your messaging, or even your employer brand. To go further, you can also test paid advertising. It takes a long time to set up, but if you have the volume and the time to devote to it, you can count on a continuous flow of candidates. There is a cost of 500 euro per interview. We obviously recommend the search engines and social networks you know, but also sites like Reddit or Quora. A tip would be to convince your CEO or CMO to have the marketing department work on this, and uh, as it is done in some tech companies already. Then comes referral, which is sometimes forgotten. It is, however, a channel that presents a rather unique quality. The um, referral operates like a first filter and saves time. In this way, you can increase the quality of candidates that you reach out to. You can, of course, also count on your community. If you're lucky enough to have a user base made, of, made up of developers, feel free to try something very simple. Send a newsletter um, with a reward of maybe a thousand or two thousand euros for the person who helps you to recruit. Also, sponsoring a meetup, of course, this was before COVID, um, is also a very simple and inexpensive way to build a strong relationship with developers. Usually, it just costs the price of pizzas and beers. And on the back end, the photos and videos taken at the event will be shared on their networks and it will definitely improve your employer brand. 
by re repeating this month after month, you will steadily really gain visibility and credibility in the market. And this is where Talent.io comes in and combines the benefits of using all of these resources. Now, let's move to number four. How to personalize your approach? Why is that important? When a recruiter contacts a candidate on Talent.io, the response rate is 98%. Yet, LinkedIn admits that the 25% 20, uh, response rate to an email recruitment is an acceptable rate. In fact, the candidates on Talent.io are all qualified by us and we make sure that they are actively seeking or looking for a new job, which is why the response rates are much higher. It's also important to pay, a close, uh, to pay close attention to timing, meaning be there at the right time, for example, when the candidates open to new opportunities, to approach them. Um, take particular care to qualify your candidate, knowing their profile, technical stack, and um, just look at their profile in more detail. And um, this will then allow you to take a personalized approach and use the right words in your messaging. By focusing on these elements, you can take a personalized approach and increase your conversion rates and therefore your efficiency. I think one of three elements um, that are really important is to use the candidate's name at all times when you address them in a message. To mention their current situation as well, of course, or the job or the industry they are working in. That's why it's important to scan their profile um, accurately. And also, it's really important to not send generic emails. It might take a bit more time, but customized um, approaches are proven to work better. Now, number five, play the long game. So anticipating the opening of a position is essential since you gain several weeks of potential candidates. More and more companies are starting to recruit before the opportunity is available. That is, they look at and contact the profiles every week across their entire stack and recruit all year round. Of course, we at Talent.io could not miss a review of the good recruitment process. What is the proper hiring process? Well, the ideal recruitment process is transparent. Be transparent. That means you need to define how, you, how your process unfolds. Who will they meet? What is your process or timeline? Will you have coding tests? Ideally, the recruitment process should be as short as possible. In recruiting, speed is synonymous with efficiency. Looking at our data, we noticed that companies that recruit in less than two weeks have a more than 30% chance of recruiting the people they meet. Beyond six weeks, we go from 35% to 20%. Once you're in your hiring process, try to be as quick as possible. Longer processes mean reduced conversion rates, which means meeting more candidates and therefore, by extension, recruitment costs, which increase. What is your average time to hire? According to our figures, more than half of the companies recruiting on talent do it in less than 26 days. What does that mean? Concretely, tech recruiting is a very competitive activity. So if you want to be successful, you have to accelerate to lead the race. Glassdoor looked at 300,000 hiring processes and found that the average time to hire a software engineer is 35 days. If you are above, there is a good chance that you can progress by working on the previously mentioned topics. On Talent.io, we are on average of 23 days. Thank you all for listening and I hope that we cover some ideas that you found helpful. We'll be happy to see you next time.